On the second rest day of the tour, how would you assess the race for you guys so far? Uh, I mean, you know, we've had obviously really good moments uh, with winning with Dan, and then we've had you know some sort of mediocre ones with yesterday. Um, but you know, overall, I think uh, now we hit the final week where we sort of always thought that we would be able to, you know pop guys into breakaways and that was kind of always the strategy so now we'll see if we can execute on that strategy. The, the white jersey looks looks over for, for, for Talansky but is there still a possibility of getting one or maybe even two guys into the top ten? It's a possibility but I don't think they're gonna do it you know just by sort of trying to sit in the lead group and you know wait until the final climb um, or you know take a bunch of time out of people in time trials I, I don't think or in the last time trial I don't think that's the way you know, that, that's not the way we get a guy in the top 10. I mean, I, I think basically we just have to focus on trying to win stages. And if, you know, we're lucky enough that one of them sneaks into the top 10 as a result of that, then then they do. Which stage do you think suits the, suits the capabilities of the team more, perhaps the outdoor stage? I mean, I, I think basically we, we need to treat pretty much every remaining stage, uh, I mean, well, maybe not the Champs-Élysées, but every remaining stage as just a one-day race and race it like a one-day race and then see what pops up. Do you still stand by not, not bringing a spin to this, to this year's race? Is that the right decision? I think so. Um, you know, again, the proof, is, or the proof will be in the pudding. You know, the last week of the tour is um, going to be where, you know, sort of the team was designed to, you know, to help out Dan and Andrew and, and perform. So um, that, that's sort of what I bet on. So now i got to see whether the bet pays off or not. And Talansky, I mean, sometimes GC positions can be deceptive in some ways, but how, how, how far has he moved on since last year's Vuelta? Well, I mean, I think he's improved considerably, but, you know, the Tour is obviously leveled higher than the Vuelta, and, you know, he knows that, And um, but he's, you know, he's chipping away at it little by little. He gets a little better every year. I mean, same with Dan, you know, Dan, Dan was nowhere on GC in the Tour de France last year as his first Tour, and now he's a little better, and, you know, Andrew's right there, and I think, I think they're both you know they're both making good progression. I mean, this year was a little bit of sort of the changing of the guard for our team, in that uh, eventually I needed to you know move young guys in, move the young guys into leadership roles in the team, and um, you know there was always going to be sort of a moment where you know that it doesn't quite work out as as you know as really focusing on your veterans immediately. But if you look at the long game, 2014, 2015, you know those guys I think were setting them up for a, you know for a big future. In terms of transitions and, and improving the team for the future, is this this season coming up or the end of the season perhaps the biggest one you'll have? I mean, yeah, we're going to have a lot of transition. Yeah, that, that's for sure. I mean, it's just a matter of you know, um, you know, you, I mean, you've got a lot of guys that, that are close to retirement age um, on this team, and and um, you know, and I'm looking forward to developing and bringing on new and young riders onto the team, and. Um, you know, again, like that, it's not always, you know, short term, sometimes the performance can, can back off a little bit when you do that. But, um, but you know, it's a, it's a real pleasure working with guys like Rowan and, and Andrew and Dan and, you know, watching, watching them sort of come up through the program and get just a little better every year.